Hello and welcome to The Bottom Line, brought to you by Telecom TV and sponsored by IBM. In this, the ninth programme of our series, we look at the possible landscape and ecosystem of the communications industry in 2015. Peering into the future and prognosticating about events yet to come is a tricky business. In fact, to forecast anything at all is to make yourself a hostage to fortune. But that said, whilst claiming that it is possible to foretell exactly how the future will pan out in detail is stupid, it is both sensible and pertinent to extrapolate current trends and events into a statistically probable future. So, in examining what the landscape of the communications industry will look like in five years' time, we have to start from where we are now. The network-centric industry of yesteryear is being supplanted by the customer-centric industry of today and tomorrow. Consumers want more different and compelling applications that are relevant to them in both their working and in their social lives. This has resulted in an explosion of over-the-top services provided by new market entrants that are anything but traditional telcos and carry no historical baggage with them at all. The uh, industry has got new uh, kids on the block, new competitors uh, that uh, are you know, represented by the big internet tigers like the Googles, the uh, Skype, which actually provide uh, uh, broader options to users on uh, you know, deals that have to do with maybe less quality, best effort services uh, on a freemium basis. All that is making the market very complex and very elaborate now for operators and they need to respond quickly. First of all, they got that huge infrastructure to pull behind them and turning that over, making that leaner, meaner, more efficient is a big job. So the over-the-top players can move much faster because they haven't got to build that infrastructure. But I think you'd have to say the telecom industry hasn't been the fastest at innovating at the application level. The application uh, development is largely being done by those over-the-top players. I think telecom has been searching for its role there. And then, of course, there are the devices. The basic feature phone of yesteryear is being transformed into something completely new, an innovative piece of advanced consumer electronics that combines the functions of a powerful computer, a PDA, an entertainment console, a web browser, a social networking tool, and a good old phone, all in one small, easily portable handset. And with the smarter devices comes a huge demand for data in general and mobile data in particular. The old fixed line systems are being eclipsed by wireless networks and mobile comms and value is migrating with the changes as voice traffic declines and data traffic rushes in to fill the vacuum. I think the sector is uh, about to go through a wake-up call and the wake-up call is coming in the form of data or an abundance of data trying to find its way through the networks. We have come to become very comfortable in our ability to build networks, to roll out networks, and predict the traffic on networks as long as it was voice. Why? Because the average user appears to use about 500 minutes a month, no matter where they are. And the amount of usage is still limited by the number of people who are out there. Well, with data, it's not the same. We don't have a natural corollary where this curve somehow approaches an asymptotic limit. It just seems to go straight up, which, by the way, is the very thing that's going to drive the industry to wake up and look at its models and to start rethinking how they invest to support that type of user. Ecosystem is very important for technical operators. A lot of technical already started. You know, we built a very good platform for them. They, we, uh, we allocate a lot of you know, good API to the third party players. They develop software above our platform, then combine together, they work faster. If you look at it from the perspective of the content providers, they actually don't want to see a sort of patchwork of services from multiple ISPs. They're actually looking for a, a more homogenous, what, well, not more, from a, from a, a homogenous um, service set. Um, so the industry, in any case, will have to find a way to present that as something that looks seamless. So if you do the cloud computing, you provide a converged service and a flexible service to the end user, you will get more revenue. You improve your performance and also you cut your cost because cloud computing lets you 
you know, fully reuse your ID, uh, IT infrastructure, idle IT infrastructure for some other in enterprise. And also, you can cut your uh, CapEx TCO over. Now, the big question is, once the upheaval is over, what will the change landscape look like and how different will the industry ecosystem actually be? In my view, what they should really be doing is looking at enabling those applications to exist. After all, they, they enable at the transport level, but they could be enabling at other levels. For example, they're very good at collecting money from lots of people. They have a very big retail customer base. They're very good at security and authentication. These are all values that either the overtop player has got to build it into their service, or the communications player provides it. It's very good business to be an efficient access provider. We should not forget that. But on top of that, there are things they are the best position to provide, like for example, taking care in a reliable way of the data that their users have, like contacts, like messages. They are also the best position to really warranty that the user experience that involves the handset, the network, the, the you know services that you deliver through the cloud is, is the best possible. And they also are very, very efficient in handling pay relationships which some big internet companies still have to prove they know how to do it. So we think their future is very good, but it has to be redefined quickly. Well, with markets saturating, revenue growth stalling, and upstart OTT companies taking big bites out of the market share and profits of established players, the industry faces some hard questions and some tough choices. It seems likely that four possible scenarios could emerge within the industry but whose outcomes are very far from clear. To begin with, there's survivor consolidation. In this scenario, investors lose confidence in certain companies and withdraw their support. Cash crises follow and a new round of consolidation whittles down the number of players by as much as 50%. The second scenario is horizontal expansion caused by legislation, regulation, regional or local initiatives that drive broadband access in less well-served markets while private infrastructure investments are concentrated on densely populated conurbations. Growth comes via premium price connectivity services for application and content providers. Scenario three is what I call the clash of the titans, where telcos proactively consolidate an ally to take on the OTT players, the device manufacturers and infrastructure technology vendors. This results in the emergence of mega carriers that expand by providing comprehensive and packaged end-to-end -end solutions into allied vertical markets. The fourth possible scenario is the generative bazaar, where the barriers between telcos and the OTT players blurs almost completely. Here, infrastructure providers integrate horizontally to form a smallish number of cooperative network environments that provide pervasive, inexpensive open comms access to any consumer on any device. So, what's the bottom line to take away from this episode? Well, and thankfully, it's unlikely that any of these scenarios will happen to the extremes mentioned. But it is imperative that telcos bear them in mind as they plan for a far from certain future. Time will tell which of the four scenarios is the most accurate, but it's evident that established communication service providers will need to exhibit a set of common attributes if they are to live long and prosper in the digital world of 2015. The winners will be those that have in place a strategy for cost-effective, very high-speed broadband access and services. The ability to optimise business based on the ownership and exploitation of an advanced network have the best insight into customer behaviour and requirements, and last, but by no means least, are extremely good at managing costs. And all this will be happening in a new, highly collaborative environment, characterised by new processes and systems, and endlessly renewable organisational, business and financial agility. A tall order? You bet it is. But some will rise to the challenge and be successful, while others will fail and go to the wall. For the winners, the future will be exciting, profitable and long-lived. For the losers, it will be very much like the present, but a lot shorter.